how much mm -hmm. he was making from TikTok ad revenue, and it was like uh, one thousand six hundred in like a day. And he showed me his phone, and he's like, huge chances. But, Why? but that <laughs> number though that I just told you, like one thousand six hundred a day, a day. That's a lot. That's a lot. Like, do you believe that though? Yeah, I think it could happen because you know the TikTok. Uh, once you go viral on TikTok, the numbers is going crazy. Hello, guys, and welcome to the fourth edition of the Standouts podcast. Today, I have a freestyler from Japan who is currently a content creator with over one million followers on social media. What he's doing with his football freestyle skills mixing it with stunts, editing magic, and even a little bit of humor and comedy as well, is revolutionizing the way people create content. I'm super glad to introduce to you guys Ryu Numada, Ryu Tricks. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sammy. Oh, what's up? Brother, it is, it is a pleasure to have you on the podcast, bro. I mean, ever since like you came to LA back in April mm -hmm. of last year, I saw uh -huh. the way that you live life and you just... You seize the moment, and I'm like, man, I can learn so yeah. much from you. You're just such a happy guy, bro. That's why I love about you. Like, you have a happy vibe. <laughs> yeah, good all the memories. Time. Good memories. Man, I I just remember June like <laughs> doing the headstand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll go. We'll go. We'll go back to LA soon for sure. We love the city. I love San Monica so much. Yeah. I wish. I wish I could live there. It is. But you know. It. It. it Everything is expensive there, so... <laughs> yeah, for sure. But it's a beautiful mm -hmm. place, beautiful memories. Yeah. So, all right, let's jump straight into the interview. So, uh -huh. the first question, which mm -hmm. I should have... Let me pull it up so I can be a little bit more concise here. Okay. Well, actually, I remember the first question. So, what you're doing with... Your freestyle, obviously, you are a very skilled freestyler. You've been freestyling for years. But the track that you're taking with mixing it with these different elements, you know, the humor, mm. editing magic, and also, you know, the public stunts and all of these sorts mm. of things on social media. Um, how did that start? Like, you know, how did you get into that? Mm. Is that something you've always thought about? Or was there some sort of inspiration that triggered you to try mm. it? Uh the first of all, I started the freestyle uh, in 2013. It's seven years ago. And uh, from that time until like 2008, 2018, I was like 100% freestyler. Mm. You know, I am 100% concentrating on improving my freestyle tricks. Then something happened. That was the time like uh, I realized, I actually realized how important the social media is and how powerful the social media is and uh, it was i still remember it was a time i was competing uh, with a youtuber for like a online competition and then so you as you know i've been practicing freestyle for over five years and then and then i was trying to get a boat you know you we need to win, we need to get a boat for winning the online competition. So I really trying to get a boat. I literally send thousands of emails to my, all my friends. Uh, can you vote for me today? Can you vote for me? Every single day for entire week. Then I was really hustling. However, that YouTuber like little tweeted one tweet and then he got like hundreds votes in an instance. Mm. I was hustling, but he beat me. He beat me in an instance. So I was like, okay, it is actually it is what it is. So that I realized that people don't care. People don't care that how, I, how good I am at freestyle or how, am I good, how hustling I am. That people care about the, like, like, like you know, social media is really powerful. I noticed it. So it changed my mind. Okay, people don't care about uh, my stuff. Hmm. So I really need to put in the work into my social media content. Like, so the right after that experience, I started my Instagram account. That was 2019. 
the since then yeah I was more focusing on the content not for the freestyle yeah that's a very interesting approach and it's sort of that classic thing of you know working hard is nothing when compared to working smart so you were realizing that you know it's sort of a similar thing that i realized as well with freestyle is it's you know yeah you know you need to be hard you need to hard work hard of course for sure the plus you need to be smart so exactly yeah 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 not to take anything away from hard work of course but it's like you know sometimes it's worth taking a step back and being you know realistic with yourself is this hard work that i'm doing necessarily in the right way and so that's something that i realized a little bit with freestyle and my own visions is Mm -hmm. i really love freestyle as well but sometimes Mm -hmm. you need to change the method of what you're doing in order to accomplish your own visions so just my personal story of course the interview is about you but like to connect to that like I came to LA and I was living, you know, the freestyle life, doing the Mm. shows and working with some brands, not a huge influencer like you, but Mm -hmm. I was doing that and I felt it really wasn't fulfilling the ultimate goal that I wanted to. Mm. And so that's why now I've been branching into the brand and the podcasts as well about mindset. So that's, that's sort of like me just increasing my tool belt. So it seems mm. like for you, social media is a key part of your tools to achieve mm. your success. So where do you see it going? Like, what's your vision with social media? So the, my life goals, the basically it's really simple. The first one is uh, keep doing what I love. And the second one is keep inspiring by what I love. Okay. Only two. It's simple. So, so basically, why I do the posts on social media is not for like for I don't want I don't want attention. I don't want I don't want like likes or views. <laughs> so people misunderstand me. Like I do it for the views, but I don't give a sh- really. So I want inspire people by my content. So. So, but to inspire people, to inspire a lot of people, you, so you have to build your audience first. Mm. That's what I'm trying right now. So the first step I need is build my audience as much, as big as uh, I can. Then uh, keep putting the, my work into the social media and keep inspiring the people. So then the, my life goals are accomplished. Wow. That's very interesting. It's actually something that a lot of people get caught up in, like you said, is doing something for the likes for this person in order to show off to this person. But that doesn't make you happy inside. And one of the things Mm. I actually Mm. did is recently I was like, you know what, I'm going to take a step back. And from everything, from everything I like, everything I think I want, and I'm just Mm going to think, all right, you know, back to when I was five years old. What do I Mm. really want out of my life? What is going to make Mm. me happy? Mm. And then I can decide, should I do freestyle? Should I use social media? Should I do all these things? Because I think a lot of the problem is sometimes people have all these tools and they just look Mm. and they see, oh, he's doing social media. I'll do it too. But it's like, no, Mm. that's, that's his tool. Like in the same way that, you know, I can't do what you're doing on social media. You have a different skill set. You have different vision. Mm. So that's very interesting. And you also brought up one thing, which is, this may be a a tough topic to kind of get into, but Mm -hmm. like, how do you, actually, this is skipping ahead a few questions, but, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let's, let's go for it. Let's go for it. So you have hundreds of thousands, I mean, over 1 million followers. Mm -hmm. How do you balance creating the content that people want to see? but also Mm -hmm. staying true to your vision and, like you said, doing what you love. Like, where's that line? How do you balance that? Uh, The first, uh, it's all about supply and demand, I think. So, like, so many people are trying to uh, supply too much. Okay, Mm. so many people are like, hey, look at me. I got this skill. I'm great. Look at me. The supply too, supply too much. The people don't, People care about, don't care about it, right? Yeah. So, I have uh, like 
so for me, for example, for me, I have a freestyle skills, but I notice no one care about my freestyle. So it's a it's a little bit hard to be, find a balance. But mm. the people, so I notice people want to laugh or people want to humor. Then I just mix it with my freestyle with the humor, and it works. So the basically like uh, supply and demand. What I, what I can offer to the world and what is the of offer uh, want, me, want from me. So you need to find the f between them. Hmm. Okay. So that's that's very interesting. So I completely agree with you. You know, especially myself. The past two years, I'm only sort of realizing this now. Is like, yeah, you can train five hours a day. You can do all this and all that. But if you expect mm -hmm. being a great freestyler to make you go viral or make you a millionaire, it's not going to happen mm -hmm. because yeah, there's no sure. demand for that. Mm -hmm. But so I have this question for you because there would be a lot of people that would say, oh, why don't you just, you know, do freestyle? Like, why do you want to get, you know, the views? But I guess then that goes back to you saying, you know, your goal in your life is to influence people, as many people as you mm -hmm. can. So... I, I definitely I definitely respect that bro and huge mm. up. Um it's it's kind of interesting you're like yeah I don't care about the views says the guy who gets like millions of views. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. I mean give me some views bro. I I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, let's let's dive more into the social media and more of the attention grabbing so you're mm. really good at capturing people's attention quickly mm -hmm. so is this something that you were born with or did you have to work on that really hard in order to learn like what people want to see and so yeah it's it's all about taste and learning so like the people think like my videos always going viral but it's not i put over like i have been made I have made over 500 videos mm. and only like the 10% is going viral, but the people only can see them and the people think that, oh, you do's content is always going viral, but it's not. It's always test, test and learning. I, okay, how about this? And it's, it doesn't work. Okay, I don't care. Okay, go on the next. And then how about this? It's a uh, minor change. You need to change a little bit every single time. So. How about this? And then put it, put it in work. Then it doesn't work. Okay, or let me change it. So yeah, and then adjust it, adjust it. And then finally you have a, like a final product. I mean, your final style, video content style. Mm. So it's not, a, uh, it's not happening overnight or you need to, you need to uh, work on it. Yeah, so it's a lot of testing in order to find out what does work. For sure. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting to hear. Because um, I, I can see how a lot of people would think that, you know, you kind of just make videos and they either go viral or they don't. But, like, you have it down to a science. So what's, yeah. what's sort of like, you know, maybe for someone who's watching this who is a content creator and they want to increase, mm -hmm. you know, their their content their abilities to reach more people. What are some of the things mm -hmm. that you noticed that like you change them and all of a sudden, oh wow, this video did so much better? No, uh, the, in two years ago, 2018, I only posted uh, like freestyle content, freestyle football content. And then uh, I, I posted for like uh, um, for months and it doesn't work. So it's- oh, Sorry, I you posted like what? I posted the freestyle content for months, but it doesn't work. It it doesn't get it didn't get any views. Mm. So I was thinking like I need to change something. So then next I uh, think of uh, combining the football element because you know freestyle football uh, stems from the football. There are so many freestylers argue like the freestyle is not a football. Freestyle is a sport, art. Yeah, I respect, I agree with that. But if you want to build your audience, if you, if you want to give views, uh, you can't ignore football. Yeah. Football, because you know, football, freestyle still uh, comes from the football. And then 
99% except freestylers, 99% watching freestyle because of because they love football. Make sense? So like the next step I thought like okay, let me uh adding like normal football element. So I started post torque shots. Because you know it's a still uh freestyle skill. Yet uh trick shot is is kind of like a football element. Yeah. So I posted it for like years and then it it's I can see a result. However, and uh, I started to notice that but it's really hard to consist uh posting in a crazy trick shot every single day because yeah. you know you ca you can't do a crazy trick shot every single day it's not happen it's not crazy anymore if if you can do it every day mm. so but to grow your account to grow your social media you need to post like constantly you need to post every day so then i started to like like you said i started to add like editing magic or like humor you know you can add you can come up with a humor every day of course you can come up with a editing idea so then you can still uh impress you my you can still impress your freestyle that plus you can be consistent uh on social media so it's uh, all about uh, shifting gradually it's not uh, like oh this works no not not not, not like that Mm. shifting gradually okay yeah so i guess Over i fell years. into the trap of you know maybe there is one or two things that make it better but it's just a process okay mm. that's good to hear um so yeah all right going viral all right so this is more of like a broad question um mm -hmm. for all of our viewers so, and I guess it ties into a little bit, like, what you're doing. Obviously, you're getting millions of views. You're connecting with people all over the world. Like, your videos are getting shared on literally everything. So, mm -hmm. what is, like, what's your goal with connecting with people? And also, like, what is something that you could encourage people to do so that they could connect with more people? Because... What you're doing with freestyle is really special because not mm. not many freestylers are reaching the audience that you are. So it's mm. like, how is this all tying together kind of? And like, what can other freestylers, other people take from this if, you know, they're doing one craft and they want to connect with more people? Like, what would your advice to them be? Uh, it's really simple. So like, if you have one skill you need to combine with another element. Okay. Okay, so if you are good at, for example, if you are good at a freestyle, that's a huge, like, that's a huge, if you, are, if you are great at a freestyle, that's a huge. But yet, you need to something more. So in my case, uh, it was like, like I said, it's a humor, it was like editing, stunts, whatever, whatever you want. So, Freestyle is a still small niche. Yeah. Right? But if the humor, the funny videos has a huge audience. If you mix it, uh, if, if you mix it, you can uh, still uh, love what you're doing. And then you can reach, reach to the many people. Mm. So it's all about just grabbing different elements, seeing what works together and combining them. And then you reach yeah. those different niches. Exactly. I love it, bro. I love it. That's very good. <laughs> so, so yeah. So the why? Okay. So let me let me talk about the why I don't compete. Ah, we start I, competitions. I actually asked you that before. I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, and so many people, so many freestylers ask me the why you don't compete. Mm. Uh, even though you were uh, great, you are a good freestyler, but you don't, you never compete. Why? So it's because. So there are so many reasons behind it, but you know, it's because everyone, everyone is great. It's too great. So to be fair, uh, there's no chance to be him in competitions. Mm. I, I think uh, I need like 10 years of hard work to be him. <laughs> so what's going to happen if I be him? 
just just satisfaction and what's gonna left so be realistic be realistic so it's gonna happen so it's really hard yet it's gonna happen nothing nothing gonna happen yeah so so that's why i uh my change my mind from trying to be the best freestyler to best content creator because i already knew i already knew i'm not i'm not gonna be the best in the world hmm. so it's about yeah, self-awareness what i'm good at the what i suck at you need to both and uh, ignore the what you suck at what i'm good at was uh, making make people laugh or like making a video like, i suck at I'm actually not suck at, but I suck at like competing on stages or something. So I ignore it and then I only focus on all my, uh, what I good at. Yeah, no, for sure. The way I see it is it's like the intersection between what you enjoy doing, what mm-hmm. you're talented at or skilled mm-hmm. at and what the market wants. So it's like, there's yeah. three kind of things that, mm-hmm. um, I'm sure you share a similar perspective, correct? Mm. Yeah, so because, you know, in Japan there are so many great freestylers. You know, there is there's Kosuke, Yo, Kazani. They they are too strong. They are strong too strong to beat. Mm. So there's no chance to be a, even the best in Japan. But yet nobody, nobody in Japan posts a video freestyle videos seriously. So I I thought it was a chance for me. Well, I think you you took that chance very well and you're obviously very skilled Mm. at what you do. So I very, very much respect that, bro. So thank you so much. Yeah. So we've gone through actually all the questions that we had prepared only 25, Mm -hmm. 20 minutes so far. So let's go Mm -hmm. a little bit off the off the scripts a little bit. This could be pretty fun. Mm -hmm. So I know everyone nowadays is really hyped on, you know, how big is TikTok going to get? versus Mm -hmm. you know how far down is instagram gonna go because it seems like tiktok is getting higher Mm. what's your opinion like what do you think um you know so first of all there's so many people uh trying to be a youtuber because you you can earn money instant money by youtube Mm -hmm. but you know so like i said it's really hard to be in a become a youtuber because you know there's so many people trying to be a youtuber Yet, so, because, because they can money instantly, but yet they can see in a future. You need to see a future. You need to see in a five years, five years from now, 10 years from now. So like TikTok is obviously going to be monetized. Instagram going to be monetized soon. So you need to be like more like you need to see the future. So Instagram, TikTok definitely has a future. So I thought I started TikTok because I saw this has a future. That's why I joined the TikTok. But now Instagram started the reels. Mm. That was huge. Real. So people don't, people misunderstand, underestimate. People underestimate the reels. Real is a huge invention. It was a huge invention. So, so like it, it it's changed. It changed. So you need to keep uh, looking at uh, what the attention go- goes. What I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. This is actually, yeah, for sure. The reels was a huge thing. And I noticed that, you know, even with myself, I get more views on the reels. I'm not so focused on the content right now, but mm. one of the things similar to that is I noticed that Gary V talks about a lot how social media and e-commerce are essentially becoming the same thing. And mm. so not to give away too much of my own brand strategy, because I'm thinking ahead as well, but it's mm. interesting how Instagram actually added like a shop section and they moved the notifications mm. and they put the shop button where the yeah. notifications used to be. I'm like, mm. that's a clear trigger. And also you see different things with like Twitter and um, what is it like Walmart. And mm. honestly, at this point, 
all it's gonna take is like Amazon creating its own social media yeah. platform and then like like this is the future and I definitely see it like so many people shopping online now with the pandemic boom online shopping mm. bigger than ever so that's sort of my vision with this is you know mm. to create that brand that's so intrinsically related with the message which I want to spread on social media because you know everyone has a clothing brand mm. nowadays like no one cares so <laughs> <laughs> I need to create something that is dope that like you know mm. people actually vibe with and they're like wow this awesome. this is a movement not just a, a brand mm. so and that's why I love having influential and inspiring people like you on bro because it's it's super awesome uh-huh. for me and for everyone watching <laughs> So that was a little tangent, but mm. what was I going to ask you? Uh, I was going to ask you a different question. Mm-hmm. What was it? People are going to be watching this now and be like, Sammy, hurry up. Think of the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, off the script. Okay. Yeah, so. Oh, uh, this is the question. Mm-hmm. So I talked to a TikToker recently who, mm-hmm. and I won't disclose his name because I'm not sure he would want that. And it was kind of a private talk, but he mm-hmm. has millions of followers on TikTok, like, mm. like over two or three million. Mm-hmm. So, Is he and freestyle? He, no, no, mm-hmm. no. Um, I, I will tell you athlete? this. He, he is an athlete. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. He does some sort of movement, like, like sport mm. thing. All right. Cool. Um, and he has millions of followers. I think he's like mm. two or three million or above at this point. But my question for you is he showed me his phone one day of how much mm-hmm. he was making from TikTok ad revenue. And it was like uh, 1,600 in like a day. In like a day. Wow. What's your, what's your thing with that? Because I know you're at 700K, right? So mm-hmm. you can kind of gauge like, like he showed me his phone. So I wasn't sure if it was real, but... Mm-hmm. What's going on with TikTok and the monetization? I, I kind of want to know more about so, that. Bro, so, you guys are so lucky because you live in America. Uh, so, that kind of monetization happens only in Europe and the US. So, I cannot make any money when you live in Japan. Why so, is my that? revenue from TikTok is zero. No, really? So, yeah, exactly. So, so what I what I earned from TikTok is just uh, advertising the company's product or company's services. That's how I earn money from TikTok. So the TikTok like creators funds, it, it happens in the US. So you guys are so lucky. So why don't you take advantage of it? Just go post on TikTok. That's what he was what, telling what you... me. I was like, yeah, yeah, bro, I don't really do freestyle so much anymore because, you know, doesn't align with the the money I want to make, and he showed me his phone, and he's like, huge chances. But Why? but that <laughs> number though that I just told you, like one thousand six hundred a day, a day. That's a lot. That's a lot. Like, do you believe that though? Yeah, I think it could happen because you know the TikTok. Uh, once you go viral on TikTok, the numbers is going crazy. Like mm. it could happen like that 10 millions could happen. So if he like if he making a two or three uh, viral content. Yeah, it could happen. No wonder. All right. Get on TikTok. Yeah. Note to self. Yeah. <laughs> so. No. S- yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Any, uh, go ahead. The, all, yeah. Yeah. Every single athlete. Of course, including freestylers, should start TikTok. The first thing every day. Yeah. Because, you know, the reels and the TikTok is uh, like the only chance to grow your audience quickly. You cannot, you can't do it on Facebook. You can't do it on Twitter, but uh, you can do it on TikTok and the reels. Okay. So the, all athletes. No exhibition. All athletes should start TikTok and the Reels. Okay, so TikTok and Reels, that's sort of the tool that you want to use to get there. And then, as you were saying, you know, maybe combine it with different elements, like, you know, not to take what yeah. you're doing, but, 
you know, I could combine it with something different, like you combine freestyle with humor. Y yes. That's very interesting. So, all right. So, I'm sure we're not the first people doing a podcast about how important TikTok is, but guys, <laughs> now <laughs> you've heard it again yeah, for the millionth yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, huge. For sure. So, is there any other platform, or is it just TikTok and Instagram Reels that you're thinking are the big ones right now? Uh, actually, it depends on what content you are posting. Oh, really? Yeah, but uh, if you are athlete, like TikTok uh, Reels uh, only one. So, okay. for example, like the TikTok is really hard to grow. That, uh, sorry, uh, Twitter. So I'm sorry. Twitter. Tw oh, okay. I'm <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, Twitter is hard to grow because you know you can't you can't your content go viral until the people push the retweet buttons. So like you need to like something stands out if you uh, if you get a retweet from people. So but if you are confident what you are doing, if you if you are creating like big niche stuff like you are making a your cooking niche if you are fashion niche or cooking niche uh the more chances will go viral on twitter but if you are if you are at a, like a small niche like freestyle or like athlete um, i don't think it's a good idea to work hard on twitter that's interesting because you brought up something that a lot of people don't really talk about which is a lot of people talk about oh, TikTok, Instagram Reels, but they don't talk about what kind of content people are creating. So you're differentiating mm. it based on the kind of content you create. So mm, yeah. if, if you're a small niche kind of person and mm. maybe you're an athlete, then mm. TikTok, Instagram Reels is perfect. But mm. if you're someone who's more like maybe an older demographic even, would you say? Yeah. yeah. Then the like other platforms. Or, yeah other platforms will be better that's very interesting okay that's interesting to hear so i will get on tiktok i will compete with you for your hundreds yeah, yeah, of thousands sure. of followers <laughs> let's do it <laughs> bro we'll have a game every day to see oh bro i got a thousand followers today how many did you get um, <laughs> yeah so so you you're currently not monetized on tiktok yeah. so you're living exclusively from doing stuff with brands as you said correct yeah yeah. Okay. Did you ever do any performances? I know you have the B two or the B two company. Is that what B2 it was? Well, what is that? Wait. Oh, uh, I think I just butchered what the shirt that you have. <laughs> <laughs> that's like. <laughs> well. Wait. Let me find it on Instagram. I'll show it to you. Uh, okay. I think I just said something really stupid, but I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> So, I think it's like B2 Entertainment. I, I should stop saying this because I might be wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The shirt that you're wearing in this one. Oh, yeah. This is my team. Uh, me and Jun. Okay, it is B2 is Entertainment. A... Yeah, it's a team. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, it, and that's a team t-shirt. Okay. So you guys mm. did the shows and all of that stuff? Sometimes together, yeah. Okay. So what was your vision with that? Because I know the coronavirus like kind of put that on hold, but did you plan on scaling that? Or were you, once you saw social media, you're like, I have to go 100% social media? Um, I'm still doing the performances on stages. Okay. But maybe I won't in like in the future. Because you know you can do the uh, you can do uh, performance on stages uh, when you are like forties, fifties. Mm. It's impossible because you know freestyle requires basically the like energy and uh, some movement, and uh, yeah. so it's really hard to be maintain your level when you are forties or fifties. It, it I th I think it doesn't have a future. But, mm. However, you can you can still do it the same thing when you creating a content when you are forties, fifties. Some like eighties people, even eighties, uh, go viral on TikTok or on Instagram. The age is just number on social media. 
but you cannot do it on stages when you are 18s, 70s, definitely not. So thinking about the, uh, my future, I want to focus in more like social media stuff and not on the stages. Okay, for sure. And so right now you're focused on the social media and you're getting your money from the brand partnerships. Are you working with TikTok at all to like possibly bring the creator program to, you know, Japan? Like, cause I know you're verified on TikTok. Like, do you work with them mm -hmm. directly at all or are you just on the platform? Uh, yeah. I, I'm, sometimes I'm working with them. Uh, okay. the, la last week I was invited the like creators, like, how can I say like creators? Uh, exclusive like yeah. event, yeah. Then I was performing there, so like t for me, TikTok is a huge for me. And uh, I started the early early stages. Like it was two years ago. TikTok was not that famous two years ago, and uh, I was the uh, only guy. I think I was the only guy on the platform in Japan posting like the uh, not lip thinking. I was posting like the tricks and the people are like, what the hell is guy this do this guy doing? The peop so many people are trying to lip sync and I'm posting the tricks. So but it turns out to be great because you know I have the uh, I have a following right now. So and I definitely think like TikTok has a future too. So yeah, working with them is uh, is a uh, huge for me. For and sure. I will do yeah yeah it's actually it's funny you brought that up i remember they reached out to me when it was still musically it wasn't even called mm. tiktok yet and yeah. I, I posted some videos on the app i got some horrible number of views like i'm like all right this there's so many glitches it, throw it away <laughs> and then the yeah. guy reached out to me and he's like yo we want to get mm -hmm. you to post content on there and i'm like all right fine and so i posted yeah. some content and then one of mm. them got featured and i'm like okay mm. got two thousand followers and then mm -hmm. one time I posted another video, it was mm -hmm. of, it was actually after I got to LA and it got like mm -hmm. 500k views. And I just remember my phone, like the whole week, two weeks, like every mm -hmm. minute I check like new follower, new follower, new follower. <laughs> I got like 20,000 followers in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> I just, I didn't get it. But I know what you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my problem is this, and this is actually something I was talking with the, the other guy I was just saying, the athlete who makes a lot of money. He was mm -hmm. saying that one of the biggest problems on social media is people get demotivated and they give up too early. So like, I saw that little bit of success. I was like, oh my God, I'm getting so many followers. I can make my living from it. And then it just stopped. And then I started mm -hmm. getting like 500 views, like not mm -hmm. many likes. And still to this day, it's like, it's hard for me to get my momentum back up. So what's, what do you do in that, in that case scenario? Mm -hmm. How do you stay motivated and like, how do you keep going? And like, how do you fix that problem if you feel like your views are going down? Mm, it's interesting. So because I still have the same problem right now because you know, mm. some, some contents uh, got, got a good result, but some don't. So like the first, the first, thing you have to do is uh, don't care about the numbers like you don't need to you don't need to care about the how many likes you get you don't need to care about how many viewers how many followers you got it's just numbers so if you are if you really love if you really love what you do it it's fine just post it the posting has zero money the, the cost zero right cost no money it's free so why you don't like post it, uh, it it doesn't work. It's fine, nothing to lose. So make the content, post it, nothing happens. It's okay. It's fine because you don't have nothing to lose. Right? That wow, that that was actually so good. So, I feel yeah, like no, no, no. The people are like have the, so many expectation mm. for the platforms. So some people are, like posting. And they expect like millions of views because, you know, they always uh, watching a for you page and they always mm. uh, watching like the millions of likes on them. And then they think that is normal, but it doesn't. People uh, expectation expectations are too high. The all, 
the, all of them start with the zero followers, zero likes, zero views. You need to, you need to know that. And then you need to like, uh, at least like a hundred videos. I, 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 I don't remember. I posted over like a hundred videos, but I posted over hundred videos, hundred, to blow up my account. Hmm. So you need to be consistent. Yeah. So it's like sometimes Just, people they post certain amount of videos, they get one that hits it really well. But and then they kind of expect that like all their next videos are gonna be like that, but that's not yeah, the case. Yeah, that's crazy. They give up like a four or five videos. No, you need to post like a hundred videos. Then you can give up. So maybe <laughs> it mean maybe it means that your content is not that good. Mm. If you if you post a hundred videos and no views, basically it it means that your content sucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> However. It, it doesn't make any sense if you give up, like when you post a four or five videos. Yeah. I think if Gary V was in this room right now, he would like give you a huge hug. <laughs> like, <yes. laughs> yeah, I like him. I like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you follow him, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's a very inspirational guy. So inspirational. Wow. So, yeah, man. Let me think if there's anything else. I feel like we could go on for hours about mm -hmm. this now. Um, let's see. I'm trying to put myself in the, the seat of the viewer right now. And, you mm -hmm. know, I have this guy here who knows how to go viral, who knows how to do all mm -hmm. this stuff. What would I mm -hmm. ask as someone who's the viewer? Um, yeah, so where do you see... This is something more from my perspective because I always felt like social media, trying to make a living from social media is a bit unreliable and it, it feels mm. like you're always waiting. You, this brand, like if I don't mm. get this brand, then I'm not going to have enough money and I have to mm. reach out to these brands. What if they all say no? If I, if I stop getting views, what's going to happen? Mm. So how do you hedge that, um, that uncertainty and make sure mm -hmm. that you can still keep you know, paying your bills. Mm. So, I I am a content creator, but if you crush it, I'm fine because I'm a freestyler. I can make money on streets. I can make money on stages. Mm. So, content, content creator, as a content creator, it's an additional option for me. If mm. you crush it, I'm still alive because I have a skill. So, you need to have skills for making a living. So for me, it's a freestyle skills. Then you start it, you, you're gonna start your own social media. Then you can, you have a two source of income, right? And if you, if your social media side crash down, it's fine. You have, you have make a living from, from this one. Okay. Definitely. So it's like set, set up social media as just one source of income and then have your yeah. skills and other sources as well. That's very important yeah. to know because I think a lot so of people... That, that's, why, that's why I'm still trying to improve my freestyle skills. Mm. At, at the same time, I'm trying to build my audiences. Got you. Mm. That makes a lot of sense because I know that was one problem that I was feeling as I was starting to make money on social media. As I was like, eh, brands mm. eh, come and go. I yeah. feel like I'm waiting. And also... For someone who, you know, is a content creator who I'm sure is getting a lot of value from this already. How, how do you go about working with brands? Do you always wait until they contact you or are you contacting brands? I think I've never contacted with any brand. I, really? I, I, I was, yeah, I'm always waiting for the DMs and then uh, I got a DM, I check it. And then if, I, if I'm interested in, okay, I, I'm going to do it. But if I can, if I'm not interested... Okay, no thanks. Oh, wow. Okay, that's interesting because, again, the other guy who I was talking about, who I won't name, mm -hmm. but he said, yeah, he's always reaching out to brands, like, you know, 50 brands every day. He'll just, like, email a ton of them and just, like, try mm -hmm. and keep going, keep going, trying to get into contact. So that's interesting that you don't, and you kind of just let them come to you. Have you ever been in a point where 
you haven't had a brand contact you in a while and you kind of get like like nervous and you think like oh maybe I should like reach out to a brand myself you or you don't think no, that no i don't feel i don't feel nervous when i when i contact with a brand or companies but um, you know like if you if you give like if you got the enough exposure if you got enough value to them they come you don't need to go mm. because you know every single company has a ma- social media manager and then they will keep looking at the influencers who uh, matches their niche who have matches their content so like you don't need to go if you give enough value to them they come if they don't come that means that you don't give uh, enough value to them that's it I love that. That's an approach of again, if Gary V was in this room, bro. He'd be like, <laughs> bro. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. So, you're coming at it from the perspective of, you know, instead of taking that time and sitting down and writing 50 emails to brands every day, why don't you take those that hour, 2 hours and go make better content and then deliver mm. more value and then the brands yeah. will come to you. That's great, man. I I love it. And, you know, one other thing I want to ask you since maybe we're getting towards towards the end but just about you in general you're a very positive guy and mm-hmm. i really i love your vibes and your energy bro <laughs> thank you how do you stay positive like i'm curious like what uh, do you do uh I, I don't know you're just naturally uh, positive <laughs> no i'm not no i'm not no yeah so like first I don't know. It, it it's really complicated. But uh, the first advice I can give to the people, like you need to uh, have some like skills that stands out among the normal. Mm. So, like if you if you have like, enough value, if you feel enough value for yourself, you can be positive. Like you, some people feel like uh, feel awkward when you. Uh, when you surrounded with a really uh, great, uh, great people, when you yeah. feel awkward because you feel inferior, but you feel like uh, when when you feel like uh, uh, some uh, good stuff for yourself, you can be positive. You can be inferior. You, so that's a, some kind of key for being a positive. You have to like being great. Hmm. So it's like search for the most self when you search for that self improvement and you work towards it that kind yeah. of fulfills you and that makes you have more confidence and you exactly. become more positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to be yeah, confidence to be positive, I think. So to build wow. a confidence, you need to be great. So that's why yeah, I'm I'm kind of addicted to be great, to be a becoming a, a great athlete. Because wow. I, I feel insecurities for myself when I was a kid. I, I didn't have anything. I feel inferior. But mm. once I built uh, my skills, I got confident. Then I got positive. So you can do it too. Okay, wow. And I guess I will ask this about you as well. With your superior skill set, you also have... A talent for just you know communicating with people and I remember there was this video of you in Times Square and you, <laughs> I, I think it went viral on Twitter right mm. yeah 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 that that went crazy viral yeah that was crazy so for lack of a better way to phrase this question how do you do that like how do you how do you get that many people to watch you because mm. there's a lot of freestylers athletes everyone in general who might be thinking man like I have a really great skill, but mm. it seems like when I show it to people, they don't really care or like, but mm. it seems like you, when you, even if you're just in the street, just freestyling, not mm. necessarily doing the stunts or the editing magic or the humor, like in your content, but you mm. still attract mm-hmm. people. So mm. how? Uh, I think that the people, the, like so many artists, yeah, like I said, that. So many like freestyles, artists will like uh, look at me. So I'm great. Why why you don't look at me? I'm great. 
Oh, you don't look at me? Oh, you suck. I think that it's a not right mindset. You、mm. need to give them. You need, you need to give something to them. You need to, you need to make them laugh. You need to make them、uh, excited. So, like, there, it's, a, it's all about point of view. So many people are like, see from your side.、Mm. You need to yourself from the other side or from the audience side. That's big. That's... Okay, so, so be specific. So, if you're a freestyler, so, so many people are trying to like,、uh, saw really hard tricks in front of the audience, like two revolution tricks, three revolution tricks. But the audience, the normal people, don't care about it. How many times legs you swing your legs? Doesn't care. So, it's much better when you keep smiling at the two around the world. <laughs> Right? It's much more attractive. People、mm. don't care about your skill. The people care about you, your personality. So, so many people,、uh, artists, athletes, are trying to, trying to get attention by trying to impress them.、Mm. Yeah, but, they're just trying to show, like, I'm great and this and that, but they don't, they don't see it from the perspective of, you know, and, and I get it because. You know, sometimes with freestyle, we're so into our craft. We're so devoted and like, oh, I want to do this trick. Like, I want to do this three、yeah. rev. And oh my God, like, this trick is so hard. Why don't people appreciate、mm. it? I train all these hours.、Yeah. But it's like what you're saying, you got to step back. Like, who's watching you?、Mm. Like, are they、mm. getting entertained? If not, then、exactly. you're not going to entertain. It's that simple. Yeah. Wow. I love that, bro. And. Advice coming from someone who truly preaches or truly practices what he preaches. So,、mm-hmm. yeah, bro, is there anything else that you want to talk about that you want to share with the audience?、Um, I don't know. <laughs> start TikTok, start TikTok and start the reels. Like, keep posting and you're going to see the results. Don't give up. It, it costs zero money, so you have nothing to lose. So, just、uh, record your whatever training session, just post it. I love it, it, bro. Yeah. Very, very empowering. All right. So, bro, it has been so great having you on this podcast. Yeah. This is really great because this is a very different theme from the first three things、mm-hmm. that we've had. So,、mm. I really appreciate your time, bro. And yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate all the advice that you've given to everyone who is watching at home. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the podcast. Let us know what you're going to be implementing to grow your social media game, given what Ryu has taught us. And guys, make sure to like, leave a comment, letting us know what you're going to do, and subscribe because as you can see, we're rolling out more and more. So thank、mm-hmm. you guys. I hope you've gotten a lot of value from this video. See you next time.